Welcome to Chris BI. My name is Chris. I'm here with Dax the dog. And today we're going to be showing you how to write your first queries in a Power BI data mark. Excited about this. Google Alliance is counting on you. Like, subscribe, leave a comment down below, turn on that alarm bell so you don't miss any future emission. Okay, so. Uh, in order to write your uh, first queries in your Power BI data mart, we're going to go into the data mart section that we have created. We're going to go into our workspace, and this is the Power BI demo data mart that we created last time. As you can see, I've got all my tables in here. Everything is refreshing. I am good to go. So I am going to click on my Power BI data mart and head into that. On this home page or home page, home page. Home page, we're gonna see all, you know, we could go through and we could get a look at the data so we can understand what's in any given table. Today, we're gonna to be focusing in on creating a query. So the query tab is right down here. So if I click on a query, it's gonna pop me up to my query builder screen. This is gonna be the, the drag and drop query building experience. We're gonna focus in on the T-SQL building experience. So if you go, uh, which is where you basically write your own query from select from where, see any of my other videos. Uh, if I remember to put links in, you'll see them someplace. Uh, but I've got a whole bunch of series about writing T-SQL statements. So in order to do that, you just click on new query and new SQL query. I'll start you with a visual query, but you can, uh, you can switch over to a new SQL query. And this is where I highly recommend you guys getting, getting started and, and using this for building your queries. What are main components of a query? It's select, from, and where. So we always start with that. So we're gonna start typing here, select. And I always start with star so that I can kind of fill in what whatever I'm going to do. I don't like to run with star, I like to start with star. So I do select, from, and here's where I'm gonna to start to add in tables that I wanted to include inside my query. And just like in a star schema where all of your actions are in your fact tables, I highly recommend that you start with your fact table and then you join from there so that everything uh, goes out from that centralized action space connecting out to the various dimensions that you have. I'm gonna write from fact, fact, internet sales, I'm gonna select that. And I like to put an alias on, so I'm gonna do an alias of FIS, right? So oh, FIS space, and then I'm, uh, I'm gonna say where FIS dot uh, due date is greater than or equal to and we'll just see, you know, just get some information about what we have. So I'm gonna start with a, a single quote, one slash one slash, and you know what? Let's take a look at, at last year, cause I don't know if there's any data in my demo data set. Uh, so I'll say a one slash one slash 23, right? Um, and let me zoom in so you can see this, okay? So I've got the basics of my query. This is gonna return all the results from my fact table or for my fact internet sales, where the due date is greater than uh, January 1st, 2023. But I don't necessarily wanna pull all of this back because I don't know how much data is here, right? Like if it's 40 terabytes of data, like number one, the query's not gonna be able to run, it's gonna cause me all sorts of problems, right? Like, so I'm gonna do something else in here. Instead of this star, I'm gonna use count. So I'm gonna say count, I'm gonna put, parentheses around that star and see, I call this a uh, row count, right? So now I have, as we can see, give me the count of records from the fact internet sales where this is the due date, okay? So once that's in place, I'm gonna hit run. <laughs> that was an error then, you know, hey, we're not GA yet. Uh, that actually worked. As you can kind of see, we have 4,000 261 records, that's not a lot, so that is that is just fine. Uh, so one of the things I like to do is I like to give myself some uh, tips so I can remember this. So that's 4261, 
So when I want to add in, let's say I want to see some information from the dim product table, right? So I'm going to do uh, inner join, uh, dim product. I'm going to call it DP. I'm going to say on. I'm going to say FIS because I want to start. I want to start with my fact table, right? So starts always on on the left side of any equal sign. And so this is going to be my product key. Product key, as you can see, I, it IntelliType selects it for me. All right, so oops. Product key equals DP dot product key. I'm going to select that. So that my query is going to look like this. So you can see that I've got my select count from my fact internet sales. I get, I've commented out. That's what. That's what this double dash does is it comments out this record count that I have here. So that when I run this, I can be assured that I'm going to get all the results that I, I, I'm expecting to get, right? So I can hit, I can see that this is all there and I'm keeping my due date. So I'm gonna hit run again and I'm going to uh, get the exact same number here. This shows that the, the join that I did on my table is the join that I'd expect it to be so that I'm, I'm you know, and it's working as it should, right? Sometimes you need to explore your database because you might have uh, tables or field names in there that are similar, but they don't actually relate and that they cause problems for you. So you, you always want to test to make sure you, you have good integrity of any query that you have, okay? Now that I've got this query built, I'm going to go up and I'm going to start to make some enhancements to this query. So uh, I always want to have... Uh, the select count as something that I can run inside my query. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to edit my query to put select count inside of, uh, like right above my from statement. So I could, if I wanted to, I could come in and highlight this, run it and get the results that I, you know, check the results to make sure that they, they match what I'd want, but I can otherwise go in and uh, test out the values that I have. Now I like to maintain two types of groupings on a table. So I like to have first one is FIS, oh, I'm sorry. I like to have what I'm going to group by. So I'm gonna be looking at aggregating by my products. So I wanna have all my product information, which are the attributes at the top, and then my values that I'm going to be uh, summing uh, it down below. So in this case, it's gonna be uh, DP dot, for some reason, aliases don't work in the select statement. I don't know, maybe it's a thing, uh, but we're just gonna do with English product name. I hit enter, I'm gonna hit comma, and go uh, again, dim product dot English description, okay? So th those are gonna be my two uh, dimensional attributes. And then I'm gonna give myself, I like to have a white space in between so it becomes easy for me to read and easy to do uh, a next step that I'm gonna do. Is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna say comma, and this is gonna be my FIS dot, oh, that doesn't work either, fact, internet sales dot, and I wanna have sales amount is gonna be my aggregation, all right? So I've got this in, now in order to do an aggregation, which means grouping or like summation of stuff, I'm gonna put a summation or sum around it, and then I'm gonna do something called giving it a name, because now I've created a new thing, which is the summation of sales amount. Maybe I want to call that sales amount total, or I want to give it some other name. Um, I'm just going to use sales amount for that. But I am up at the top. I'm going to give this stuff some additional names, because I don't need to know that it's the English name. I know that it's the English name, right? Like, I can read that it's the English name. So I'm going to call this product name. And I'm going to call this description. So... Uh, with the space in there, um, this will allow me to rename it. Uh, for clarity's sake, I'm going to put an as in for all of these. So that's easy for, for anyone who's coming along who maybe is not familiar with SQL to be able to come up and read this. So let's take a look at this right now. So I've got my select dim product English name as product name, uh, dim product English description as description, and then my summation fact internet sales dot sales amount as sales amount. You'd think... Hey, Chris, can you hit run? Let's try it. It's gonna error. Oh, what's wrong? Multi-part identifier and product name could not be bound. Can, 
what this is saying, that the issue that we have here is we don't have a group buy, right? We want this to be summarized, right? We want to have this value summarized, but in order to have this summarized, we have to first group these. And that's why I've, I, I always put uh, my attributes above anything that I'm going to be aggregating, so it becomes really easy. So I'm going to now take this information, and a pro tip, this kind of stinks, or this makes it a little difficult, is um, uh, in your group by statement, you can't have you can't have the product name. So I'm going to have to like eliminate that when I when I type that in. But my group by goes down at the bottom. So I'm going to give myself a little room. I'm going to type in group by. And I always like to do group by order by right away. Um, so that I, everything looks kind of uniform and it's not just spit out in the order that the, da the data comes by or it comes out of the system by. So it's easier for me to read. If you are having memory issues and uh, the order by can be a real problem for the SQL engine if there's lots and lots of information. So do remember that you can eliminate that. Uh, but I'm going to paste in what I had selected above. I'm going to delete out that name because we don't, you know, we can't have that in our order by or group by. Then I'm going to paste that up on top. And now when I run this, this is going to give me There we go. All right, so aliases are not fully supported yet uh, inside of data marts that will hopefully be coming soon. But as you can see, we've got our product name, we've got our description both renamed. Everything is in alphabetical order, and you can see that we've got the sales amount is right here, and it's all summarized nice and easy for us. Okay, the nice thing about this query is now this query is available down inside my, the queries that I have. So I can come down here, and I can double click on it, and I can rename this. So I could call this um, product sales, right? So now I've got a query that's available inside of uh, my data mart that other people on my team can use, right? So if you wanna do something more complex, you can go and do that. Or if you wanna have something that allows for you to um, understand like how you should be you know, writing some basic queries that are used by your team, you can easily keep that inside of your data mart. So for example, I've got my, uh, you know, my basic query example here whoa, is right here. And it's just, it's just the, um, uh, the select statement on my dim date, right? I could also do uh, a basic uh, inner join and a limiting there. So I've got, in this case, I'm limiting my date dimension to the, the um, uh, all of the date keys in my fact internet sales, uh, or I'm sorry, my due date, ship date, and order date keys, right? So I can come up with what's going to be a proper uh, query for my date dimension, right? So this is a great way to start to document and share queries inside of your team with other or with other people on your team. I highly recommend checking this out. This is a fantastic feature. This is very much akin to using uh, Jupyter notebooks where you can keep your code along with the data, along with the results, all in a space that's easily shareable by people in your area. I highly recommend that this is just an absolutely great way to work and interact with data, all right? Hey, Dex, uh, I hope you found that this was really helpful. I hope you watching found that this was very helpful for how you go in and create your first query with a Power BI Data Mart. Uh, give it a shot. Try writing your SQL queries. Give you know, Run through those. Play with that visual uh, query creation. Uh, see how that experience is. Let me know in the comments down below which one you like better. Do you like writing your query like I, I do? Uh, that's where I have a natural affinity. Or is the new experience better and I should spend more time on that? Uh, let me know. As always, if you like this content, do make sure that you've liked, subscribed to the channel, share this with other people inside your organization. Heck, pin this video inside your COE on how people can get started working with queries. That would be great. I'd really appreciate it. You guys have a great day. Peace.
Baker Tilly Digital combines strategic industry insight and advanced technical expertise to uncover and solve your digital transformation challenges. If you're interested in learning more, check out our website at bakertilly.com digital.